What's up guys? It's been a while since we did an update video on the 240, but Taylor's been hard at work doing all this stuff. Uh, the car is currently sitting at Nissan, where it's been for the last, what, like four months or so? I think, Probably. I don't even remember when I got it here. So, precursor, basically, what happened was he wasn't able to work on it at his dad's house anymore. COVID. And, yeah, COVID stuff going on, so. The now what had happened was everything got brought over to Nissan where he works and this is where it sat for the last few months while he's been grinding hard away. I know we haven't done like a video or anything for you guys to kind of update it, but um, yeah, a lot of work has gone into what's been going on. So I don't know if you yeah. want to tell him kind of yeah um, what you've been doing. So pretty much it's kind of like I view this situation as like a... I don't know if that's the right word, angel in disguise. So I was supposed to obviously be working on it at my dad's, but kind of COVID happened and, you know, it was kind of, I wasn't really allowed to go there and work on the car. So it was a little difficult, but what I ended up doing is I was able to work out having the car here at work where when I brought the car here, the engine wasn't in the car. Um, I was able to paint the engine bay at my dad's and that was kind of like good timing. I was able to paint it, COVID happened. And now the car's here, so I got the car here. It's a lot easier here for one because I have access to my lift. So access to a lift is like levels above just jacking stuff up and sliding under because it's honestly a pain. But yeah, I mean, slap the engine in, pretty much started working on everything around it, getting the engine running, running good. Ran fuel lines. I had to drop the subframe and do subframe bushings. Undercoated the whole underside. There's a lot of work that went into it, but um, we finally got it pretty much squared away. And this was what we just finished now is I had to extend all the wires to up front for the headlights, corner lights, turn signals, side markers, all that jazz. So I already had everything labeled inside from when I took the harness out and put it on the inside and routed it that way. I just had to chop and extend everything. So did that today. Um, we fitted the bumper up. We fitted the lip on it too, which looks great. And all the lights work now. So I'm very pleased. Um, John helped me a ton. Can't thank him enough. And that's where we are right now, you know? And the next step is to throw the dashboard on, get the inside looking normal again because it's been, you know, pigsty and a mess for God knows how long because of just waiting on wiring and stuff. Um, throw that on, you know, I have to wire up the gauges now since pretty much this whole front end squared away. Let's wire up the gauges and this thing is ready to rock and roll. So that's where we are right now. Yeah, so got it, you know, started up a while ago. We haven't done any update videos for you guys in a while just because timing of everything and kind of time constraints with Taylor being at work, only being able to work on it after hours or, you know, on Saturdays and stuff when yeah. if he's not working, whatever's going on. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a lot. Um, I've been busy with other stuff, so I haven't even really been here to help him with a lot of this stuff. So he's just kind of been grinding a lot on his own, getting everything done. Mm -hmm. But you know, now it's sitting pretty, looks like a car again. Yeah. The whole front end and everything is on. He's a rich boy, so he's got the super expensive USDM lip. Uh, all brand new OEM parts. Uh, everything was gotten through Nismo parts plug, which we, you know, we always shout out Dylan over there and Dylan, you're the man. Put him in, uh, put a link for him in the description and stuff, so you guys can go check him out for all your OEM Nissan Nismo parts needs and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's finally a car. So yeah, finally wanna, a car pop the hood so we can yeah, see pop. the goodies underneath there.
So. Uh, a lot of things I had to do different with this setup. And don't mind it, it's really dirty right now. The paint's filthy. Probably not gonna see it in the video, but. Yeah, certain things like I had to change up um, because I have the Chase Bay's tucked rad. I mean, it's a universe. I don't want to say it's a universal. It's made for this car, but problem is the Chase Bay's filler neck would normally go here, but there's no way I was going to have that here and then have a hose because it would hit the TPS. So I had to, you know, put my thinking hat on and go big brain. And I ended up what I did was I put it here and it's kind of floating here. It's pretty solid because it's pretty much butted up against the um, the neck coming off the intake. So, you know, pretty much two silicones hoses run that way and it's solid, you know. Have to run obviously a hose and I'm waiting on my, it's an OEM location overflow tank that goes over here by the filter. So I'm waiting on that just so I can run a hose, you know. And what else? I mean, there's a million things we did catch can I redid the lines so they're off the manifold because previously they rubbed a little bit over here so they're kind of floating as well and secure obviously we don't have a brake booster anymore we have a brake booster delete so I plugged the hole on the manifold and we ran the chase phase brake booster delete which yeah, is so really as you nice. guys can see Taylor pretty much went balls out on all the uh, chase phase catalog stuff so yeah shout out to those guys for the quality stuff that they put out yeah definitely cleans up everything in the engine bay and mm -hmm. it's all really really high quality stuff that they make so. yeah and i went overkill with everything um if you can see like the brake lines themselves because they're so close to the turbo i have um it's a company called dei um i have their heat sleeve on here so obviously you take the lines off run the heat sleeve over it so i have them on all the lines have them on the power steering lines over here because it's so close to the turbo and I'm not trying to melt anything. Um, I did all the turbo lines as well for coolant and oil. Pretty much wrapped everything up because I want zero issues in the future and I want to do it right since I have all this time. So I wrapped all that stuff so that's all good. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff from Chase Bays. I have their dual fan controller tucked over here um, in the corner. So those will come on. They provide a sensor for 180, but I have a different sensor for 190, so they'll come on automatically at 190 and shut off when it goes below that. So Another thing you guys can see is the oil filter relocation kit, mm -hmm. which is now, unlike the S13, is running to an oil cooler, which is kind of sandwiched between the uh, tucked rad and the air yeah. cooler over here. Uh, yeah. I couldn't find a good spot for it. I told John that. It's, it was... It's a pretty decent sized oil cooler. Um, I would say it's on the bigger end of the spectrum, but I couldn't find a solid spot. And because I didn't have the bumper on yet or any of that, I didn't know where I wanted to put it. So, I mean, there was thoughts of yeah, putting it like under the headlight over here, but I just didn't know how it was gonna be with space. So, and usually you could just put them right on the core support if the radiator wasn't tucked because you have like a thick section just to bolt it right down but with it being tucked that eliminates that so kind of fabbed up some brackets and i made it made it work like literally right under here and should be fine there's going to be plenty of air going through the intercooler and into the rad itself so i'm not worried about airflow um and at least the cool the oil temp should be a little bit lower which is what i'm aiming for i'm just trying to you know bulletproof everything as best as i can that's that that was <laughs> that was hard to think of was trying to find out the spot put that thing it took me a, a little bit to figure it out but i'm happy with it so whatever works you know yep so i think of other things i mean there's a million things i mean done. yeah there there's a lot of stuff that taylor's kind of done like i said behind the scenes without you know being able to record and stuff with a lot of different things but as always taylor went super clean and overkill yeah simple <laughs> but detailed and everything yeah. even even with just some of the simple stuff that we did today but yeah overbuild as they say just to be better safe than sorry yeah i'd rather so. do things once than for example have the brake line not uh, heat sleeve and if it gets hot you all know brake fluid is flammable so imagine it got hot melted catches fire this car burns up 
when all I could have done was just put a heat sleeve on it that costs less than 50 bucks to run and my time. So I might as well just do it that way, you know, do it the easy way and just wrap it now um, and not have to worry about stuff like that. So that's the, uh, yeah, so that was the couple, process. A couple other new additions is the carbon cam cover, which Taylor said was a little bit of a pain. Looks nice for a uh, Chinese cover. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I had to make it work. Some of the, like, the bolt holes were too small for one, um, along with the cam angle sensor hole was too small, so I just had to like drill out the holes for the bolts. I had to enlarge the hole for the cam angle sensor. The pieces on the bottom are supposed to be square with the lower cover, and they weren't, so I had to heat them up and kind of just work them out, bend them out a little bit, so it fits on there nice. It's all right. You know, for a Chinese carbon cover. It looks good, so that's mm -hmm. what I was aiming for. That and the uh, fancy new Nismo oil cap. Yeah, Nismo. Looks good, I'm happy. And I have a ton more parts to put on too. So it's all like, I have new door strikers, all OEM stuff, you know, that I've acquired over the months of owning this car for one. So I have all those things to put on just to make it all a little bit better. So, you know, like new light, I have a new light stalk, a new wiper stalk, I have a nice pillar pod from Ortiz Custom Pods. So I have a, it's the A pillar trim, so that looks really nice. I have that to put in. I have, you know, a little cruise control switch, a mirror switch, all the little new things to make it feel new again. So I have all that to put in eventually, but once we're doing the big stuff first, like the wiring was a big one. I mean, this whole thing is a big one, <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. Long time coming, if you guys look back, the, yeah. uh, the first video with this thing, well, picking up the car was back in March of last year, so. It was a while ago. Definitely been a, long a time. definitely been a long time coming, but, you know, the thing's pretty much ready to get out on the street and drive yeah. real soon, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this, the lights were preventing me from driving it just because, like, obviously you can't drive at night with zero lights in the front. Plus, the inside's all taken apart, so this is a big step forward. I just have to button up the inside and wire up gauges, and this thing's ready to rock and roll. Once all that stuff is done, then, you know, we'll get a good driving video of the car and stuff and kind of first ride as this thing has an RB-swapped S14 chassis mm -hmm. versus the SR that was in it that when we picked the car up. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, obviously we're kind of winding down here on the East Coast with car season, yeah. colder weather's coming and stuff, which is a good thing and a bad thing, but good for the car. Mm -hmm. Don't have to worry about all the crazy heat and stuff that we've had this summer, but yeah, only a couple more months to kind of enjoy it and then back away for the winter and yep. a lot more work coming after that. So. Yeah, little things, yeah. little things. So obviously you know taylor's got plans to do body work and get the exterior of the car to kind of set up the way he wants it and stuff but mm -hmm. main focus was just getting it ready to drive so that he can enjoy it before the year's out and then it just goes back into storage again literally so. enjoy it before the winter comes yeah. and i can't even drive well yeah. i can drive it but choose you know, not to. i don't want to drive it yeah anymore. yeah so. so so but that's it for today i uh, just want to give you guys kind of a big broad update on the car everything from i mean obviously we can't show you everything everything that taylor has done since yeah. the car has been sitting here but uh, as you guys can see motors in car runs mm -hmm. front end all brand new oem front end is on the car and finally looks like a car again so a yep. couple more things like taylor said that's going to go on the interior's got to get buttoned back up and then we can take this thing out to drive and see how she does with the new turbo setup and stuff and yep. it'll be fun so Appreciate you guys watching, and hey guys. definitely see another video soon with this thing. Don't know exactly when this video will get put up, but might have another video already on the back burner once this thing gets put up mm -hmm. of us driving the car and stuff. So look out for both of those, and uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.